Hi, welcome back to safety and civil engineers inside. The question is this, is civil engineers relevant in the renewable energy sector? Two, does renewable energy technology has a role to play in transportation sector? At the end of this video, you will be the one to answer this question for me, either yes or no. It might interest you to know that civil engineers plays a vital role in conceiving, designing, building, and supervising the construction of infrastructure projects, both in the public and in the private sector. Renewable energy technology is transforming the world from reliance on fossil fuel to sustainable energy. When it comes to buildings, this is what civil engineers do. They apply renewable energy technology. Have you heard of energy efficient building? You can see it for yourself. Did you know that about 40% of the world's energy is consumed in buildings? This energy is used for cooling, heating, lighting, and to power various devices. According to World Green Building Council, Buildings and constructions are responsible for 39% of all carbon emissions in the world. This emission is a major factor in the global warming experienced worldwide. With energy efficient buildings, the amount of greenhouse gas emitted and energy used in running and constructing buildings can be significantly reduced. fact that might surprise you. About 20% of all the energy we use in the U.S. goes to power commercial buildings. Buildings like the offices and schools we use every day. So you can easily see how much energy and money we can save when our buildings are as energy efficient as possible. Today's energy saving buildings are built with an approach to construction known as whole building design. The whole building approach works a lot like designing and manufacturing an automobile. All of the parts of the building are designed and built to work together as a complete system instead of just as a collection of individual parts. Builders are using these concepts to meet new certification standards. Maybe you've already heard of these LEED certified buildings. From the very beginning of each project, a team addresses all aspects of the building's construction. The team includes architects, engineers, developers, and owners, and even the people who will occupy and work in the building. Together, they set goals for energy efficiency, performance, and creative use of space. By adopting this approach, buildings can be up to 70% more efficient than conventional commercial buildings. Okay, take a look at how one of these high-performance office buildings works. It's the research support facility at the U.S. Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory. The RSF integrates many energy-saving elements into a whole system. Take the lighting system, for example. This high-performance building makes the most of the sunlight. The structure's relatively narrow width allows the sunlight to better reach its interior spaces. This daylighting design combines innovative windows intelligently placed with creative interior design to maximize the use of sunlight and minimize excess heat. Here, south-facing windows gather the sunlight. The shades, or louvers, block out the heat in the summer, and in the winter, let in more warmth and light. Daylight directed by louvers and reflected by light-colored interior surfaces provides most of the lighting that occupants need, and along with additional lighting controls, reduces the lab's energy bill. Plus, the windows are well insulated. They're triple glazed and low E-rated, keeping the cold and heat outside where they belong. Also, some of the windows are electrochromic and thermochromic, so they automatically darken when direct sunlight hits them. An advanced building technology that controls brightness, glare, and heat. In addition, the windows work with a sophisticated underfloor air distribution system to provide fresh air. It works so well, 
this building doesn't even need traditional air conditioning. Okay, now take a closer look at a workstation. Brightly lit by daylighting, the workstations use energy-efficient laptop computers, LED desk lamps, and energy management systems to ensure they're saving energy. And as with many high-performance buildings, this one not only saves energy, but it also produces energy. Solar photovoltaic panels face south to collect the sun's energy and convert it to electricity. Commercial builders and developers are using this building, and others like it, as models for new buildings everywhere. And energy efficiency is not just for new construction. Many existing buildings are being upgraded to use a lot less energy. Even the Empire State Building has been retrofitted to save energy. Saving energy, saving money, with more comfort. Energy efficient commercial buildings. Wow. Interesting, it's informative and educative. As a civil engineer, we want have to be dynamic, ingenious, pragmatic, and versatile. Let's look at the critical roles civil engineers play in building renewable energy facilities. The critical roles civil engineers play in building renewable energy facilities. Building renewable energy facilities requires experts in civil engineering who also specialize or have experience in the renewable energy sector. The following roles civil engineers play are 1. Taking part in doing a comprehensive site assessment and an energy survey to update information on soil and hydrology, among others. Two helping remediate any contaminated site or portion of site to ensure that it fits for the construction of renewable energy facility and installation of renewable technologies like wind turbines. Three, conceiving a design that incorporates renewable energy production and ensuring the suitability of structural components to be used. Four, Guarantee that the materials to be used for the project meet industry regulated sustainability and energy rating. 5. Preparing a detailed project schedule and all the necessary cost estimates to keep the renewable construction within budget and the preferred timeline of the client. 6. Overseeing site grading and construction and making sure that the facility meets safety codes. Lastly, 7. Ensuring, ensuring the finished structure can run with optimized energy performance and can withstand damaging forces such as flooding and earthquakes. Does renewable energy technology has a role to play in the transportation sector? Let's see. The federal government is set to review the failure of urban mass transit system in Nigeria. This was revealed by the Minister of State Transportation, Wimi Sharaki, at a meeting with state commissioners of transport in Abuja. The minister says that the alternatives to fossil fuel are also being explored for the sector. Correspondent Abida Lawal reports. Transportation has been described as the basis of our city's work. The transportation system in urban centers of Nigeria is replete with numerous challenges. Generally, an analysis of Nigeria's transport system reveals a sector suffering from a defective developmental approach. Road transportation accounts for 90% of both freight and passengers' transport in Nigeria. At this meeting with State Commissioners of Transport, Minister of State for Transportation, Bimisola Saraki, raises the need to review urban transit system. She calls for legislative and policy frameworks that will enhance the entire transport sector and mitigate pollution arising from all the modes of transportation. We would not be able to see, all of us collectively be able to see what we can domesticate because it's not necessarily everything that's done in country A works for us here. But the opportunity, we still learn so much from seeing, seeing is believing where you can see, feel and touch and see how you can implement it within our own environment. And even within our own environment, what works in Lagos State 
might not necessarily work in Kuala State, might not necessarily work in Bornu State. So it's always good that we're all together, that we find a medium and then see how we can domesticate um, all the, um, the solutions to our own needs and our own people. So that this is how that, that uh, the conference will do that vis-a-vis technology. Presently, the federal government does not have a mass transit system. The House of Representatives at last month urged the Nigerian government to review the mass transport policy and management with a view to making transportation affordable and accessible as a social right to all Nigerians. Conference and exhibition. Um, but we are going to take the opportunity also um, to discuss one or two other issues that are important to the transportation commissioners across the length and breadth of Nigeria. I will also have to raise with you uh, that concerns the uh, Transportation Commission across Nigeria. The lion's share of attention in our quest to neutralize carbon emissions in the transport industry has always been on road transport. It's technology we interact with every day. It's visceral. The smell, sound and sight of the internal combustion engine is near inescapable. But if we actually take the time to examine the world's carbon emissions, we start to see some less obvious polluters that don't get as much mainstream attention. Yes, road transport accounts for around 12% of our total greenhouse gas emissions, and we have the technology to reduce that to zero. But what about the other 88%? There are many industries around the world working to neutralize their carbon footprint, and each is coming up with ingenious and novel technologies to get them closer to that target. One of those industries, the shipping industry, is responsible for around 2% of the world's emissions. The vast majority of this is created by container ships, which carry 80% of the world's trade. Astoundingly, there aren't millions of cargo ships hauling our commodities around the world. Maersk, the world's largest shipping company with 17.6% of the world's market share of container transport, only has 786 ships, 786 gigantic ships. These ships typically last 20 to 30 years, so it's important that we are prepared to convert these ships to carbon neutral technology when their time comes. The largest ship in the Maersk fleet, the Triple E, is the same length as the Empire State Building. The scale of these ships is mind-blowing. A single Triple E is capable of hauling over 20,000 TEU, which means it can carry 20,000 standard 20-foot containers. To put that into more human terms, a single 20-foot container can hold about 6,000 shoeboxes. So, a single Triple E shipment could deliver over 123 million pairs of shoes, enough to fit nearly every single person in Japan. That's insane. It's easy to see these ships as gigantic pollution machines. Each one of these ships has an astounding impact on global emissions. Maersk, as a whole, released over 36.5 million metric tons of carbon dioxide in 2019, roughly equivalent to a small country's emissions like Ireland. Thankfully, the shipping industry is already pretty efficient, but there is always room to improve. This will take investment and will cut into the shipping industry's profits as fuel prices rise. But these are necessary moves to not only reduce, but eliminate our carbon emissions. As we saw, the only reason these shipping companies began to move away from heavy fuel is because the International Maritime Organization mandated it. We need to continue putting pressure on companies to not only clean up their technology, but be ready for the next step. These are big machines that will be sailing our oceans for decades. Making the wrong move now and betting on a fuel that ultimately isn't better for the environment and isn't scalable is a problem we will have to live with for decades. We need to be future focused and make the right decisions today. What do you have to say? Let's look at the sources of renewable energy technology. We have the solar energy, the wind energy, the biogas energy, geothermal and hydroelectric energy. For renewable energy projects to be successfully implemented, the civil engineers has a role to play. Example is the wind energy. The civil engineers are involved in the design and construction of the wind turbine foundation. This is how the wind turbine foundation for wind energy is being constructed.
video I believe is quite impactful, please send in your comments, either yes or no. Is civil engineers relevant in renewable energy sector? Does renewable energy technology has a role to play in transportation sector? Thank you. I hope to hear from you soon.